Hi, welcome back to Java tutorial. In Java, we have two methods to create multiple threads. One is by extending the threads class and other one is by implementing the runnable interface. In the previous video, I have discussed how to create multiple threads that is uh, multi-threading by extending the thread class. In this video, I will discuss uh, how to create the multiple threads by implementing the runnable interface. Here I have already created the main class uh, multiple threads uh, using runnable interface. Now uh, I will try to create uh, two threads and then uh, I will try to execute uh, those two threads by implementing the runnable interface in this case. So I will start uh, the thread one that is uh, I will name class thread one here and then uh, I will write implements runnable. Uh, in this case I am trying to implement the runnable uh, interface here. So within a thread uh, we should have uh, one uh, uh, method definition that is run here. So I will write public wide run and then within this particular run we will write the body of that particular thread here. So in this case I don't do much I just try to display a simple message like uh, it is thread1 and uh, later I will create one more thread there, there I will write it is uh, thread2 or something. So here I will write thread 1 here. So this is thread number 1. That is the simple message I am printing here. Similarly what I do is I will create one more thread. That is a class thread 2 implements uh, again runnable. Uh, within this particular thread I have to define this particular method again. So public wide uh, run here. And then I will give a simple message like uh, system dot out dot println. You can say that thread to here. So I have just given a message like a thread one and thread two uh, in these two uh, threads here. Now I will go to the main class here, and within this particular main class, I will implement the main method that is a public static wide main. And then I will write string args square brackets here. Now within this particular uh, the main method, what I suppose to do is uh, I need to call these two uh, run methods. The run method is present in thread1 and thread2. They are implementing a runnable uh, what you can say that interface here. Now I will create an object of thread1 and thread2 that is uh, thread1. We can say that t1 is equal to new thread uh, 1. So I have created an object of uh, thread 1. Uh, rather than writing t1 here, I will write obj. That's the best option. obj1 you can say. Similarly, I will create another uh, object of uh, thread 2 in this case. obj2. And then new uh, thread 2 over here. Now if I try to run on that, if I try to execute this particular run method with the help of a start, it is not possible. That is obj1 dot, you can say that uh, start, uh, I will get an error message here. The error message is uh, the method start is undefined in uh, thread1. So what is present in uh, thread1 is uh, only the run method. And uh, uh, we are implementing runnable uh, interface here and it has only run method. In the previous case, we were extending the threads class. The threads class has the start method. Because of that, uh, we were able to execute that particular start method with an object of thread1. But here it is not possible. So what we need to do here is we need to add one extra statement here. That is, uh, we need to create an object of a threads class here. I will say it as a t1 in this case. And then I need to pass an object of the class which implements this particular runnable interface. So here the object of thread1 is what? You can say that obj1 here. Similarly, I need to create one more thread. That is the thread t2 uh, is equal to new thread. Here I need to pass an object of uh, thread2 because that is implementing runnable class again here. Now using t1, I can call start method here. Now once I call this particular start method, it in turn call this particular run method of uh, thread1. Okay. So similarly, I will use uh, t2.start. Uh, the meaning of this one is uh, I am able to run 
the what is that called the run method of uh, uh, thread two in this case okay now i will try to execute and see what is the output i will get so first i am executing t1 dot start means i should get the thread one and the second time i should get the thread two here now we will see the output definitely the expected answer is thread one and the thread two here mm, yeah we got that particular thing thread one and thread two but if you execute it multiple number of times, let us say that some hundred number of times or something, one or the other time you will get thread two first and thread two one second. The reason is, whenever we create or whenever you uh, execute this particular start method, uh, T1 and T2, the both the threads starts executing parallelly. So whichever gets uh, the resources first, that will be executed. So because of that only, sometimes you will get uh, thread one and first and later thread two. Sometimes you may get uh, thread two first also. So here, uh, because we are printing it only one time, you may not uh, see that difference. So I will do one thing here. Rather than displaying it one time, I will use a for statement. For int i uh, is equal to 0, i is less than 10, and then i plus plus here. And then, uh, within this particular for statement, I will put this particular, uh, the thread one here. Similarly, I will do it here also. That is uh, for int i is equal to 0, i is less than 10, then i plus plus here. Now within this particular uh, statement, I will put this particular second uh, threads logic. That is, I wanted to print uh, uh, thread to or something. Now uh, what actually happens is, uh, uh, whenever the thread starts running by uh, executing t1.start and t2.start, whenever the thread 1 gets the resources, this message will be displayed. Whenever thread 2 gets the resources, it will be displayed here. So, every time you will get some different uh, results in this particular case. I will just try to show that particular thing here. Uh, in this case, if you notice, uh, the thread 1 has executed completely and then thread 2. Try to execute it one more time. You may get some different output. Again, you are getting the same thing over here. Uh, I will try to execute it uh, one more time. Again, I am getting the same result. But uh, if you try to do the same thing again and again, let us say that some hundred number of time, you will get some different results in that case. Uh, here you can see the output looks uh, something like this. Thread 1 is executed. After that, uh, thread 2 was executed. And then uh, thread 1 was executed again. In between, the thread 2 was executed. And then thread 1 was executed. So in this video, what I did is, uh, I, I created uh, two threads with the help of uh, the runnable interface. And then uh, I called those particular threads with the help of uh, start method in this case. And uh, we were able to get the, uh, the result of uh, both the threads. Because the threads will execute uh, parallelly, the whichever will get uh, the resources, uh, the output of that thread will be displayed. Uh, you may get uh, the jumbled output. It is not like all the, the statements of thread 1 will be displayed first and then uh, the thread 2 will execute or something like that. It is not the case uh, in, in, in uh, multi-threading and so on. So, uh, I hope this particular concept is uh, clear. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can put those questions in the comment box below. I will try to answer those questions at the earliest. If you like the video, do like and uh, share this video with uh, your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.